Hey guys, Simon Bryson here, and for this video, I have three main goals. What exactly is a derivative? On top of that, different types of derivatives. And lastly, is it worth investing into them? And what the risks actually are? In this video, I'm gonna cover everything. However, don't worry, okay? The goal is not to leave this video confused, but to break this down to its core fundamental level. So I'm gonna keep this video very, very tight. And on top of that, make sure everything is broken down very easily and very simple. All right, that's the goal for this video. Now on top of that, if you guys are new here, I post videos every single day. So make sure to also subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. And on top of that, also destroying the like button. Now, the very first thing is this, guys, okay? Tommy, what is a derivative? What is the definition of a derivative? Now, the simple answer is this. A derivative is just a contract. And that contract, its value is based on the security is actually under. It's underlining assets. That's the whole idea. So in reality, a derivative is just a contract. However, in life, as you guys know, there are different types of contracts and also different types of derivatives, okay? So that's what we're gonna focus on on this video. But again, a derivative is just a contract where the actual value of the contract is based on the underlying assets of that entire contract. Now, it means, for example, if the underlying assets become worthless, well, that contract is also worthless. Hey, Tommy, I have a contract for all these assets. Well, they're worthless now, so so is your contract. That's the entire idea. Or, for example, hey, Tommy, I have this contract for all this amazing stuff here, all these assets. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. You're going to make a lot of money, okay? The value of the contract is based on the assets. That's the main thing you need to understand, okay? But again, derivatives are just contracts. Now, in reality, there are three main types of derivatives. And in this video, I'm gonna break down every single one of them. And the very first type are basically futures. And you probably hear about this all the time in the stock market, on YouTube. Oh my gosh, the futures are low. The futures are down. What do you do now? Oh my, what's gonna happen? But you also have futures actually traded in the market, but you also have, for example, futures that are actually traded privately with individuals and individual people. And the idea is you have a contract that obligates someone to buy or sell an asset, actually buy and also sell because one person is buying and one person is selling. That's called a transaction. So it's an obligation for one person to sell and also an obligation for one person to actually buy. And that is going to be at a certain date and time. So you have an obligation to buy, one person to sell, and also a date to actually go ahead and sell and buy transaction that entire asset. Now, the easiest way to break this down is with a private example of a forward contract. I'll break this down, don't worry. But the idea is you can actually use derivatives to actually hedge against the future, to actually limit your entire risk. Tell me, how is this possible? Well, let's use a very simple example here. You know, my uncle is a farmer and he actually raises pigs. By the way, this example is not real, obviously, okay? But his job is to be a farmer and he raises pigs. Now, it costs him around $50 to raise a pig from a little cute pig to a massive big pig fully grown in one year with something called steroids, okay? He does that all in just one year. It costs him around $50 to bring that pig from kid status to adult status, okay? through steroids, okay, don't tell anybody. But overall, the idea is that he wants to make sure that in the future, when he sells that pig one year from now, he can actually sell it for a decent profit. However, he's worried about swine flu or pig flu. And when pig flu happens, you have an outbreak, well, the price of pigs becomes very, very low. And he's very worried about it. So what does he do? He tries to enter into an entire derivative contract, an afford contract. What does this mean? It means that, for example, he found an investor that thinks, hey, I don't think swine flu is going to be a problem at all. So I'm willing to pay you, for example, $100 per pig, well, a year from now. And my entire uncle says, yeah, no problem. I make 50 bucks profit, and then I also limit my risk if anything does happen in the future. Now the investor thinks, hey, 
I'm actually gonna make more money if the price of pork goes up because it's going to be a bacon festival happening around that same time. So that's the entire idea here. Now this is called a futures contract, a forward contract. Now remember guys, two things have taken place here. Well, three things, you have a contract, futures contract, you have a price and also a date that's been agreed on. Now this is an obligation. It is not an option. It's not like, hey, I don't like the price. I don't wanna sell it to you. The answer is no. It is an obligation. So what happens is this, guys, okay? A year from now, it turns out that, hey, guess what? The bacon festival went great. And in reality, pigs are actually very high in demand now. So they went from a $100 market price to now $500 market price. Now, I go ahead, execute the entire contract and say, hey, here's your $100 per pig. Give me the pigs. I sell them on the open market for $500 and I make five times my money. Now, this means that although the farmer has his bet, his losses, he also missed out on a ton of profits and he's also a little mad. However, in a different timeline, you also had an entire epidemic, an entire outbreak. And in reality, the price per pig went down from $100 all the way down to $10. And that means the entire investor lost around 10 times his money. That's the idea here. So you clearly have one winner and also one loser. You also have an obligation, a price, and a date. So keep that in mind. But for example, if things stayed stable, like, hey, the investor made five bucks, the entire person, the entire like seller made, for example, the $50 profit. Well, in a way, everyone wins, okay? That's the idea there. But sometimes, usually, most of the times, you're gonna have a clear winner and also a clear loser. And again, remember, this is an obligation. However, if you do wanna cover your losses as an investor, you can always issue out a stop loss to your broker. Meaning, hey, if it gets to a level where I'm gonna lose a lot of money, go ahead and sell this contract to somebody else if somebody else is actually buying it, okay? That's the idea. Now, that's a private example. How would this work in the publicly traded stock market, okay? How would that work then? Well, let's say, for example, I strongly believe, for example, that Bitcoin is going to be the future. So although right now it's going to 50K, I think that in one year it's going to go for 100K. So I go ahead and I buy a contract for entire Bitcoin, you know, the futures contract, and I say, hey, I'm gonna pay $50,000 plus 1K for the premium and so on. And in one year when I sell, I'm gonna make $49,000 in profits if I'm actually right. However, if I'm wrong, I can potentially lose a ton of money. And you also have the vice versa. If I think it's going to go down, I can go ahead and short the position and basically say, hey, I'm going to buy right now the contract, sell it, and intend to buy it in the future for a lesser price. Meaning, hey, if things go down, I sell right now for a good price and it goes down further in the future, I can go ahead and rebuy for a lesser price and that way I get to keep the spread, the profit. So that's the entire idea when it comes to futures and also forward contracts, okay? A private example, but also an exchange traded example in the public stock market. Now, that's just one type of derivatives. You also have type two, options. Now options are just contracts also, however, the cool thing is basically when you buy an option, you're buying a contract, right? That's the idea. But this contract does not grant you the obligation to go ahead and buy or sell whatever it is. However, the future is the forward contracts do. That's the big difference here. Now, definitions here, guys, okay? A call option allows you the option to go ahead and buy an investment at a specific price. Now, a put option allows you to go ahead and sell an investment at a price. That's the core idea here. The reality is it's a contract giving you the option to either buy or to either sell. Now, why would I wanna do this? The idea is, again, the contract's value is based on the underlying assets all over again here, okay? Now, let's say, for example, I work for Apple and they gave me a call option. And the call option says, hey, Tommy, you have the right to go ahead and buy X amount of Apple stock, right, for this amount of money. And you have this amount of time to basing complete the transaction. That's the idea here. Well, what happens here, okay? It says, well, I can buy Apple stock for $100, and I have one year to go ahead and take action on this contract. Now, guess what happens, guys, okay? In one year, 
their price has gone up from 100 to 200, meaning I can go ahead and buy the 100 and sell it right back for 200. That way, I can go ahead and make some extra money. And by the way, if you don't have cash, you can also do this with a broker and they'll do the entire thing for you. And that way, you don't need upfront money, but they execute the option for you and take a fee. And then that way, you get the money. However, if they say, hey, we're gonna give you a put option to go ahead and sell the stock for a certain amount of money. Let's say it's $100, right? But the stock went down to $50, meaning I can go ahead and sell it for $100 and make my money back. That's the idea, or make a profit instead of going ahead and having to buy it for a certain amount of money at a lower price, okay? That's the idea. However, guys, in real life, puts and calls are not made like that distance into the future. Usually the contracts are issued out, for example, for 30 days, you have to pay premiums on it, and you also run a big, big risk of saying, hey, how the heck are you supposed to predict what's gonna happen to a stock in 30 days? The answer is usually you don't. So what happens is you have a lot of speculation going on and a lot of people taking on a lot, a lot of risk. And also, that's why that's not either the game I wanna play when it comes to this type of derivative, okay? So keep that in mind. So do you wanna do option? Do you wanna do option trading? That's not the game I wanna play because basically you're making an assumption. You're speculating on the future that you can't really predict. And that's the idea here. Unless you get, for example, paid in options, you can go ahead and buy a really good investment for a really good price and make a profit, then that's the idea there, okay? However, if it's not like that, and just for example, option trading, that's not the game I wanna do, okay? Because even stock traders, 80% of them lose money. So imagine how much people lose money, they're doing option trading. The answer is, a lot okay so keep that in mind but tell me you can do cover puts and then cover calls that we can limit your risk it's not the game i want to play however guys number three and the last type of derivative are called swaps now tell me what exactly are swaps well it's kind of in the name where basically they can swap securities swap payments swap for example cash flow and a lot of other things okay this game gets very very complicated very easily but for example let's say i have a friend and this friend has a business and he actually got a hundred thousand dollar loan right and this loan is actually variable meaning that the rate is going to keep changing and changing and changing and he doesn't know exactly how much he'll have to pay every single month however okay he just started meaning his profits are not really that stable so one month having to pay a thousand and the next month two thousand dollars is not what he wants to think about so basically he says hey let's enter into a swap contract or basically we can go ahead and swap this entire um, entire variable loan. What does this mean? I told him this, okay guys? I told him, hey, instead of having to worry about the variable rate, how about I just basically take that from you, okay? I'll make those payments, and then you can just pay me, for example, $1,200 stabling and fix for a certain amount of time. Now tell me, why would he do that? On top of that, why would you wanna do that? The answer is, well, I believe that interest rates are not going to fluctuate that much, meaning that I can go ahead, if everything stays stable, I can go ahead and make a decent amount of profit every single month. He pays me 1,200, but I only pay the bank $1,000, which means I get to keep around $200. However, if he was right, and interest rates went high like crazy, and now I'm paying $2,000 every so month, in reality, I'm the one suffering from this while he's over there saving a ton of money. And that's why usually with these games, you're entering into a person's going to win and a person is going to lose. Usually, that is what's going to happen here. And that's basically what a swap basically is. But, for example, in the real financial market, Here's a very real example. You have a company that's going to go ahead and issue out a bond. As you guys know, bonds are basically you, the investor, buying the company's debt, and they're agreeing to pay you a fixed amount of interest towards a certain amount of time. However, okay, this company is going to pay you 15% on your money, the money you actually lent them. Now, the idea is you're very happy about this, but you're also very worried about a default because this company is not really that trustworthy. Now, you also have an insurance company saying, hey, we have actually a credit default swap, meaning how about we swap the risk for default and that way we can get some of your profits. Meaning, hey, I say, hey, okay, okay, okay. So they're gonna pay me 15%. How about I give you guys 5% or half my profits and pay you that premium, right? And if they don't pay me, it means that basically you guys take the risk of the default and you guys have to go ahead and pay me my entire capital back, okay? That's the risk the insurance actually takes, however, 
if everything goes right, in reality, the insurance company made money and everything went perfectly while you just gave someone all your money. However, usually it's better to have insurance than not to have it and then regret not having insurance. That's the idea, okay? So credit swaps, you also have payment swaps, cash flow swaps, there are a lot of things. So overall, you have, for example, future contracts or forward contracts when it comes to private stuff. And on top of it, you also have, for example, options. And lastly, you also have swaps. And there's also a lot of different options within all these options. So if you wanna go deep into this stuff, the answer is you can if you want to. However, it's just a very risky, speculative gambling game to basically play that I'm not really interested in and neither is Charlie Munger. But I don't really mind, for example, like the hedging, for example, with the former example, like trying to hedge his entire profits for the future, that's different. But you know, everything else with like for profits and a lot of gambling speculation, or oil is gonna do this, future's gonna do this, all this stuff, really, 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 really risky. So be careful with that stuff, guys, okay? But guys, that is it for this video. Hopefully it helped you. If it did, comment down below, let me know, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, like the video if you liked it. On top of it, if you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified. And if you guys want to text me or talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, join my Patreon, link down below, or send me a DM on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And before I go, if you want to watch another video on maybe the way I invest my money personally without all this risk stuff, here's that video right here. And click my face right here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace.